Hi everyone. Today I want to walk you through the PyDAO Staking Reward Simulator. This tool allows you to explore how variables such as total dose stake, time lock commitment, treasury farming performance, and unclaimed reward slashing can impact your rewards. But before we go into the tutorial, I want to remind you why we implemented DAO staking, or as we like to call it, governance mining. At the core, we believe DAO profits should go to community members active in its governance, to members who agree with PyDAO's long-term goals and not just looking for short-term gain. DAO staking participants can choose to stake DAO anywhere from 6 to 36 months. Once staked, participants will receive a new token, VDAO. Remember, the value of long-term capital is higher than that of short-term capital. DAO staked for a longer period means more veto in return. The more veto you hold, the higher your voting power and rewards. Veto holders who vote at least once per month will receive cash flow via a pie named Slice, as in a slice of the rewards. These rewards include treasury farming yield, protocol fees, and other farm tokens. If you do not claim your rewards within three months, they will be redistributed amongst all the staking participants, so don't forget to claim your rewards. Now let's go down to the stake and reward simulator. At first glance, the simulator looks overwhelming when in reality it's a fairly easy tool to use. It can be broken down into three sections, treasury farming and reward distribution, total veto ecosystem, and your stake dough. Together, these three sections give way to the simulation summary, which you can find at the bottom. First up, the treasury farming and reward distribution section. Notice that you do not interact with this section. It's meant to give you two pieces of information. Number one, treasury liquidity deployed. This is a live value of treasury funds deployed in yield generating strategies. Number two, rewards distributions. A percentage breakdown of how rewards are distributed back to the DAO. The percentages were agreed upon as part of PIP60. You can find a link to PIP60 below. As you can see, 60% of rewards go to veto holders, 25% to compound the treasury, and 15% to cover costs of operation. Please note that these percentages can change in the future. The second part, total veto ecosystem, is where you can get creative. In this section, you can adjust variables that affect the amount of veto minted on the simulation and has fields for both expected treasury APR and percentage of unclaimed rewards. These last two fields will have an impact on your rewards, so I encourage you to play around with them and test different scenarios. Now, let's look at each part in detail. Let's start by explaining the concept of veto and proportional time lock, which is what these two subsections help define. Total veto. Total veto is the amount of simulated veto minted. Once staked, dough becomes veto. The amount of veto received is proportional to how long it's locked. For example, if one dough token is staked for three years, you will receive exactly one veto token in return. But if you only lock that same dough token for six months, you only receive 0.08 veto. Total staking commitment. Six months, one, two, and three years are the four staking periods you can select. To reiterate, the value of long-term capital is higher than that of short-term capital. More dough staked for a longer period means more veto in return. And more veto gives you higher voting power and rewards. More on the percentages in a second. To define the total veto minted in our simulation, click on either the veto field or the total staking commitment bar chart. A pop-up will appear. One thing you will notice is that this pop-up is made up of two subsections. The first subsection has a slider that allows you to select how much dough will be staked in your simulation. For this example, I will select a little over 6 million dough. Why 6 million? This is about 30% of the circulating supply of dough. Although not official as of the time of this recording, this percentage is the proposed in real life staking target. Note that you can only stake up to the current circulating supply of the token. This will change as more dough is either vested or staked. The second section allows you to manipulate the time lock periods in your simulation. As a reminder, the amount of VDA received is proportional to how long it's locked. In this example, we will reduce the percentage of 3 year staking from 47 to 35%. We will receive a notification asking us to allocate the remaining 12%. That 12% we will use to increase the percentage of 2 year staking participants in our simulation. We then click apply. Notice that the value in the total veto field changed. To recap, what we did is give the simulator our estimate of how much veto will be minted. This is important because in order to give you an accurate reward simulation, the simulator must know how much veto you hold and how much veto is in existence. 
We determined the amount of VDAO in our simulation. Now we can move to expected treasury APR and the rewards and claimed subsections. The expected treasury APR is the expected growth rate of the treasury. The growth rate comes from treasury farming yield, protocol fees, and custom services. For this example, we will set the APR to 9%. The actual growth rate was 8.68%, but the simulator does not accept commas in the value field. Keep in mind that expected treasury APR will vary. The rewards on claim field is not as certain at this moment. It's our estimate for what percentage of the rewards will be redistributed from inactive to active members. The slashing of rewards will only affect you after 3 months of inactivity. In this simulation, we will set it to 50%. Although this is a guess for now, an average can be established a few months into stake and go live. Now that we have completed the total veto ecosystem section, we can move on to the last piece of the puzzle. The Your Stake DO section is exactly what it sounds like. In the first field, you add a value representing how much DO you wish to stake. We will keep the value nice and round at 10,000 DO. In the Your Staking Commitment field, it's where you tell the simulator for how long you wish to stake. Again, you can only stake for periods of 6 months, 1, 2, or 3 years. In our simulation, we will stake for 12 months or 1 year. In the value field, you must type in the amount of months you wish to stake for. Notice that locking up 10,000 DO for 12 months will give you 2311.42 VDO. Finally, after adding all the values and defining the parameters, we can move on to our summary. As you can see, we get a breakdown of our expected rewards. Based on our simulation, this will be my expected yearly return and monthly return, and here is our APR. Seems kind of low if I only stake for one year. Let's go back and stake for the maximum amount of time. Three years equals 36 months. And voila, my expected returns have increased. If you are a visual person, we have integrated a graph that parallels your summary. It has tabs for expected total returns, farm treasury returns, and reward distributions. I hope this video helped you when using the reward simulator a tool which can come in handy when planning your personal dough staking strategy. We encourage you to save and share your simulation. Nothing will make us prouder than seeing what our fellow dough crew is cooking up, or should I say baking. Happy staking, amigos!